did you by any chance um, look at this tweet, which went viral, that this guy by the name of Frank Hugabeats, <laughs> he's a scientist, by the way, so it's not it's not some quackery. He actually made this prediction on 3rd of February, this couple of days before the actual uh, devastating earthquake in Turkey. He says sooner or later there will be a magnitude 7.5 earthquake in this region, South Central Turkey, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon. And it came true. Now, as you can see, it got viewed by 54 million times, 58,000. How long tweets. before the earthquake he said that? couple of days before that mm -hmm. um uh, uh, what's the date Qu quickly quickly google it what's the date of turkey syria earthquake 6th of february okay so he made this prediction on 3rd of feb so three days before that um so a lot of people went crazy they're like blah look at this nobody listened to you blah 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 i I am actually shared that as well, thinking that okay, this is pro science and people should be educated on that, and therefore you know, we should talk accidental. About it. No, it's not accidental. He he, uh, it, it's actually worse than that. Um, so it is a uh, he, he does work in this department that actually looks into the seismic activity of the earth. Um, so it's not only just that he made them or his department or his organization has made multiple predictions as well. You know, like um, this one that is going to be. Um, uh, I saw this, by the way, because I saw an Iranian social media saying yeah. that, oh, no, Iran is screwed because they said that the person who predicted the Turkey earthquake is now saying that Iran is next. And that's why yeah. this was making a lot of waves on Iranian social media. Yeah. So that's how I saw it. So, so there you go. This one, this, this one is in, uh, on uh, right on India and Pakistan. Right, right, right there. So yeah, I think it, it could be this one. So he made this prediction on 29th of January. Now, obviously, so I looked up, I looked it up a little bit more, and then he made these similar predictions about other places as well. So none of them actually happened. Now, now that's not to say that he's lying or this is just quackery. There is some science in that, but the proper science behind that is that you actually don't know. Um, so even if the relevant authorities in Turkey and Syria had seen this tweet or they they could not have done anything. There's absolutely nothing you can do because these predictions are not reliable. Because what are you going to tell people? Hey, from this entire region, you need to you, you need to evacuate the, the, these five cities and go somewhere else. Go Airbnb it for next week, two weeks, three weeks. Sometimes these predictions, as I said, like the one made about Pakistan and Iran, that one was made in January. And nothing's happened since then. Imagine if someone was listening and said, hey, okay, you know what? This guy, this department has told us. So th this organization has told us, so we better Airbnb it. it. It just doesn't work that way. There's no solution. The only solution to that is better engineering. Uh, I was watching this documentary. Wait, so the predictions, how did he make those predictions? No, so they do watch the, the seismic activity. So so they there's a lot of science behind it. It's, it's, not, it's not BS. So they have been reading, collecting data from the uh, from uh, from the ground, um, but it just you know we the, the, in this case they made uh, a right prediction, but it, it doesn't always work that way. It, it, earthquakes are almost impossible to predict. Uh, they're not like weather. With weather, so we, the, we have a better chance of predicting weather than earthquakes. The way the way yeah, because if there was enough science for you people to predict this there would be more people tell giving a warning about this yeah, it wouldn't be exactly. this this is the, uh, the science behind this does not require so people think that um science is more of a methodology that you rely on the methodology rather than the genius of one individual so if there was a methodology that would have predicted this would, like the community that you know that is responsible for this would have we already have a lot of institutions that are meant to do all that they can to predict these things so i would think that the way I explain it to people is that um, p there, there are people on the internet making predictions about everything all the time. It would be weird if accidentally some of them just don't come, uh, you know, amazing, like close to a miracle like prediction coming true, like a prophecy. Like, you know, if you don't see those, it will, you have to be weird. Like, given how, how much widespread the internet is and how much people are coming out and saying things, of course, you're going to see some matches even by random. I mean, I'm not Remember saying. Remember the guy who made a prediction about Queen's death? 
Who? Huh? So there was a guy who was who had been uh, making uh, predictions right. about the Queen's death, and then yeah, last yeah. one actually turned out to be true. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, um, given how many people, how many wackos are online and making, I mean, I'm not saying this guy is a wacko, but even if it's a completely wacko uh, person just making up predictions, you should be surprised that there wasn't just happened to be somebody that was making a prediction right before the death, and that ends up being true because people are just, it's just random things happening all the time. Like for example, the example I give is that one time I opened a book, like it was a book more than a thousand pages and I wanted to page like 600, 326 for example. And I open, I don't know exactly what page it was, but it, I opened it and it was exactly the page I wanted. It Was this a miracle? If you keep in mind that I open books all the time, many times in my life, the fact that this happens, it doesn't become that interesting anymore. Of course. I have a very point, interesting I, take on that. I have a very interesting take on that too. How many times we notice this time? 7 Eleven and 9 Eleven. Has, has that ever happened to you? Like when you look at your watch and you're like, oh, it's 7 Eleven, it's 9 Eleven. Have you, has that ever happened to you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, st stuff like that has happened to me a lot. It, it, it happens know. to me I'll, I'll, oh. all the time. But guess yeah. what? It's, it's not happening to me extraordinarily more frequently. It's just yeah. that the, these numbers are quite common, 7-Eleven and 9-Eleven. For example, right now I looked at it, it's 9-32. And I'm going to forget about it that I looked at my clock. Why? At my watch. Why? Because it didn't matter. This 9-32 number is insignificant. Unless it was a special number. Uh, it was my house address or my last three digits of yeah, my phone number. you would remember Then, then I would have remembered special. it. Then I was like, oh, yeah. look at this amazing coincidence. 932, ha oh, oh, that's my house number. Mm. <laughs> so so that, that's why we see the 7-Eleven and 9-Eleven all the time. I, I see that all yeah. the time. Yeah. So you see, I have an example in my book. Um, ex that's a very good example. For I say, imagine I think like, oh, I haven't talked to my mom for a while. And then right then the phone calls and my, it's my mom. I mean, like, wow, we have a connection, a right? But imagine if I think, like, um, I have, we, we're out of milk. And then my mom calls. And then I pick up phone. I don't think anything of this. I thought we're out of milk. I need to buy milk. And my mom calls. This is as this two things happening is also very unlikely, but it's not special to me. Even I should be so, I should, I, if you want to be talking, if you, if you want to be impressed about unlikeliness, you should also be like, Wow, what are the odds? The same time I think about we running out of milk, my mom calls. If you want to be impressed by everything that is unlikely, you should be impressed by that as well. But why are you impressed with one of them but not by the other? Because one of them is special to you and the other one doesn't seem special. It's unique to you, right? So we have we attribute significance to things and every time something significant and unlikely happens, we think something special has happened. But this is just how the natural order of things. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.